Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Jungle Island Adventures. This is Soap the Great. And where are we? We are out in the courtyard, out by this little cove here, my, where my hidey hole is. And what are we doing out here? Well, today we are going to be going on a little bit of a world tour. And the reason that I am starting out here is because if you look in the description below, you will find a link to a world download. And you're going to start out right where I am. And so if you wish to, you can follow along with me or just poke around however you feel like it if you do happen to download it. But I am starting out here because I want to show you where things are in relation to where I am currently. So out here is the cove. This is the spawn area. Um, actual spawn is right up on that hill. And uh, if you destroy all the beds, then you will end up there. But uh, you should end up in a bed inside the hidey hole if you happen to die. Um, but we are in this cove. We've got a little tree farm. The birch and spruce certainly are not native to the jungle area. I got my little sheep farm over there. And uh, that's it for out here. We've got basic stuff here. We've got the wheat watermelon, sugar cane, so on. And all of our stuff for the farm is right here. I have stopped farming the carrots and potatoes for the time being because I get those off zombies down in the zombie grinder. But um, this is episode five and I wanted to provide the world download on the fifth episode um, because that's what I initially thought of when I first started this world. And, uh, and yeah, so um, I've been able to get everything ready for that. Uh, let's just show you real quick. Cats. I've expanded the cat area. I don't really take them anywhere. There's a mushroom farm. Pretty simple. Uh, nothing, nothing too spectacular there. Again, this is all basic, basic, basic stuff. Um, so I just close all the doors because I'm a little paranoid of creepers and other stuff walking in. Right here is the potion brewing area. And we've got some fire resistance. We're going to need that for a little trip we're going to take into the nether. But I want to show you something else first. Oh, let's see. Uh, we built that on camera. And you've seen the cheaty rail duplicator. So let's go down here. The original mine was down here when I first started the hidey hole. We're going to go through that track in just a moment. But just to give you an idea of how to get around... The zombie farm is down here. Is it currently open? Yeah, it's open. There's there's this... Um, let, let's see if it'll work. Yep, there we go. Isn't that great? Reset the damage on the anvil. So, um, we built this on camera. Those guys are loud. Let's uh, Let's just continue. You've already seen all this. I just wanted to show you in relation to where everything else is. And then the mines themselves are down here. This is level 12. And we've got just basic branch mines. Um, I tried feathering right there. Uh, no, that's a regular branch. That was the feather where you go down and then dig as far as your pickle take you, which is five. Um, I have not found that to be as effective as just branching. So that's this is where the mine is. You've seen those before. So let's go on up. And uh, there's the auto smelter. And I'm going to show you the fuel source real quick. And that will give you an idea of something I've been up to. Got it? Okay. Little hint. Okay. But first we're going to go take a look at the mob farm. And you may be wondering why in the world are you going to the mob farm? Well, um... You know, we built that two episodes ago, and let me move the window up a little bit so I can see my inventory. Did I get this? Yeah, I want this. Uh, we'll go that right there, and you just jump and get into here. This is the water tower that I initially took up the villagers in, but it has proven very useful and pretty safe to get up and down between the hidey hole and the tower. Um, the tower needs a name still, by the way, so if you have any suggestions, feel free to let me know. Um, I am recording this a little before I actually announce that we need a name. 
uh, no, maybe maybe I have announced that contest, maybe not, but um, I've not received any suggestions yet, So, um, but it's still pretty early on. So uh, if you do have some suggestions, feel free to let me know. Um, I should be able to incorporate them in the next recording that I do here. So, uh, so yeah, that's how you get up from the hidey hole into the tower. And we're just going to go up this ladder. All right, so let's get back to this mob farm thing. Um, you know, we built it two episodes ago. And I was kind of... We, I didn't wait around long enough to see the full results. But um, it, it didn't look promising at first because I wasn't getting ender pearls. And then by the time I came in and started this iron and gold farm... Uh, I had let you know that the Ender Pearls were non-existent because Endermen keep teleporting out. So, uh, just to let you know, you you have to come out of the farm or out of the tower now to go around the Iron and Gold farm. And I've got these little safe, mostly safe. Just be careful when you're walking along the edges here. We have to do this to get up to the mob farm. All right. Now, before I go in and show you the result, I do want to let you know that um, I have completely redone this mob farm because we were not getting ender pearls, um, and that was the main thing that I was looking for out of this mob farm. Because trying to go hunt them is a bit problematic. I only have so much time to play this game, and uh, doing a lot of grindy hunting stuff just is not it for me. That's why I do these automation projects so that eventually I have all of the um, resources necessary. So if you're looking through the window, you see there is a bit of a change. But um, I, one of the options I had for fixing the farm was to make a glass or some form of platform over the whole area below, over the, the jungle island itself, it's 32, at least 32 away from the drop platform, and then cover it with water, okay? That would be 32 blocks out in every direction from this tower. 32 that way, that way, that way, and that way. That is obviously not something that I wanted to do. Um, that would have been a lot of sand to collect or other some other form of building blocks, and it would have really obstructed the view. So I went back to the drawing board, and I completely ripped out the mob farm. And this is what we have now. Okay, so no more water. We have switched to a shifting floor design. Um, we'll, we'll go upstairs. I'm not going to turn it on because it is rather loud. And I'm kind of worried about the lag on it. Uh, what we've got here is a floor of hoppers. And then I've got iron golems in there because they take care of any mobs that happen to drop and don't take the full fall damage and that's usually zombies and skeletons that have spawned with armor so you can hear them a little bit up here they're going to be hanging out what's this yeah there we go and let me just take care of yeah that guy so we are getting some spawns up here that's good That's great. Come on, creeper. Nothing. All right, so what I have gone for is a shifting floor design instead, and it's not a smart shifting floor. It is a, what I would call a dumb shifting floor. I'm just, I'm, I'm failing miserably. Um, we're gonna turn those guys down. They are a bit annoying. Hostile creatures down. Outside is all lit up, and if you may be you may be wondering why in the world is light not getting in there, that's one of the side effects of these half slabs. They make sure that light does not get through. Got it. Okay, got his attention and got him. And we got a chicken. So light doesn't get through, so that is completely dark in there. It's zero light level except I think right there it's like one or two. So stuff will still spawn. And what we've got is a shifting floor design. You can see a little redstone block right there. And there's another one back there. And that redstone block here is just in front of that piece of redstone. 
and we've got a piston pushing a block in place and that's breaking off a signal to another piece of redstone right there which goes you can see it somewhat maybe and there's a line of redstone driving pistons along here and one over here and the way this works is if this piston is retracted that circuit gets completed and this redstone block will power the uh, that set of pistons over there which will then move this whole set of um, half slabs over which will cause the mobs to glitch through and it moves that redstone block into a similar setup right here which pushes the whole floor back okay so we are governing this thing by using the blocking mechanism of that uh, that piston we've got four floors so it goes all the way up there and I'll show you what the the major governing thing is that we can turn off or on below and um, I've got a little torch tower signal coming down um, this piston by default is extended to cut off that signal and keep the farm from running all the time and then we just send a signal down and invert it and turn that torch off which opens that piston back up so let's go up and take a look at how that is all working um, as you know you know I want to keep the those uh, pistons closed for the most part because I don't want the floor shifting because if it's shifting then mobs aren't going to spawn so we need to turn it off for a little bit and and then we need to turn it on for just a small moment so it stays um, those pistons stay retracted for maybe a second maybe okay got that back and the way we do that uh oh I just got uh oh how did that happen that's new well I don't have all my stuff with me hmm okay I'll have to come back and fix that that's not good I don't know how in the world he managed to blow up okay well we'll just keep this thing on and then they can't they can't come out okay whatever uh, I've got a hopper timer here by TT sewer Minecraft and when this piston or this torch turns on uh, we fire a little rising edge detector it's one of my another favorite and that just sends a pulse real quick which turns off those uh, those uh, torches all the way down and it shifts those floors back and forth to the point where they drop all the mobs and uh, and yeah so so uh, well that was a bit exciting so um, that is what we've got here um, I did that all off camera because I wanted to just get it done and I needed some ender pearls and uh, we're starting to get ender pearls now well let's just turn that see what happens we should see it uh, shift you can see them dropping down there's all the experience and you can hear the um, I got a little dropper shooting the items down through the middle of the iron and gold farms I'll come back and fix that later that was that was really weird I guess the creeper saw me through that little window huh okay well whatever um, no harm no foul I'll turn that back off and this is how you get back down so um, so let's head on, head on back down um, I wanted the ender pearls for the next piece that I'm about to show you um, in addition to the um, finding a stronghold oh I got a chicken I hate chickens see I wonder if I can get them from here got it okay so we're gonna head on down and I will have to come back and bring some of those half slabs so I did it all off camera and I did the next pieces off camera as well and that's why I'm able to do a world download right now um, I can't promise that I will do one every five episodes because uh, you know I may have other projects going on that um, that you know 
I want to keep secret for the for the time being and uh you know so don't hold me to it if one comes out on the 10th episode great if not um just know that it'll be coming out soon okay now uh this is how you get back down and we are going to be going to the nether because I've been doing some work there I don't I'm probably not going to be recording there too often because it has been pretty laggy um, I've done a little bit of work in in there like oh no I wanted I wanted this one because that uh, stone slab needs to go back up top so I've put out a bunch of fire I have stopped up a bunch of flowing lava so the nether isn't as bad as it was at least right around where I usually am this and we can put away this stuff got me all discombobulated now with losing uh, losing part of that farm that's just really really strange never had any issues when I was up there before but hey things change so we're gonna go through is there I don't need to take anything and we'll take one of these just in case I do keep them out and about. Oh, and a chicken. More chickens. We'll just drink one of these. You know what? I'll keep another one on me. Just in case. Um, so, this is the nether. That's my little nether hut. And uh, one of the things I've been working on, or I worked on off camera, is over this way and I'd mentioned it before in going to the uh, fortress that uh, I did manage to find a fortress and we've gotten the next big um, big XP farm going over here and you can probably guess what it is and that's that's where I'm getting my fuel from for the auto smelter as well all zombie pigmen no chickens Okay, so here is the fortress, and we'll go over this way some. I don't want to meet up with any blaze or, well, maybe a wither skeleton, but I don't have a looting sword on me. Done a little bit of work here, and you can see the contraption right here. Um, did a little bit of a design job on it, just to make it a little bit nicer but that is the blaze farm so we'll go down here let me show you how this works and by now you've seen my uh, building this city survival multiplayer and uh, you'll know that I turned a corner in my decorating phases um, I've decided to start using quartz this is big for me if you have watched uh, watch me for some time you know that I really like comparators and daylight sensors and uh, it just seemed a waste to use that beautiful nether quartz for mere decoration but you can't beat this look honestly so there we go we've got um, got a blaze farm here it is inspired a bit by Fog's World um, I could put a link to his in the description below um, this is primarily made for using potions of harming rather than actually coming up and, and slicing at them. But you can slice at them if they get right, right close, like right in that corner. But uh, we get these guys. It takes a while for them to build up. But eventually they do. And they'll drop down in here. And you'll just close that and then hit that button. And and that does the crusher circuit you can see this this is a design by mumbo jumbo uh, I don't know somebody else may have come up with it but I first saw it on his channel and this is a lot easier than using that huge set of 21 repeaters or whatever it is a whole lot easier and then you just come back do the potions of harming and uh, grab your stuff but there we go this kind of this pushes them in there we go and then caps them down 
And that's and Bob's your uncle. So uh, over here, another infinite anvil. And then this thing. Got a silk touch efficiency pick. And then the enchanting area, a little crafting table. And stuff for repairing. There's my looting sword. That helps me get more blaze rods whenever I do the potions of harming. There's one more thing we need to do. And we're going to go on back. And hopefully I can sprint. Yep, there we go. So I've got this all lit up. I shouldn't meet any wither skeletons over here. Um, now, you know, we, we do have that nether fortress. And it is conveniently located over a lava sea. So there's more that's not rendering in. It's that way. But that is great for spawn rates. It means that I have less work to do on half slabbing. And we will get... Uh, get that prepared not on camera again um, but off camera I'll take care of that and when it comes time for doing a wither fight then I'll just bring you along for that okay so for now the nether is not um, it's not well lit in fact a lot of are well uh, marked out in fact most of the world is not there's no signs around for you to follow Ooh, got a ghast wonder where he is. Two. Okay. There's one. Okay, well, we'll just get in here. Sorry for the quietness there. No pigment around. Goodbye. Alright, the other reason I wanted those ender pearls other than the stronghold, is something up here. Man, they are loud. So I've got a little tower going up here. And it goes... I don't know if you can see it. You can't quite see it right here. Um, but we've got a little nether rack up here. And we're going up to around 120 or so. There you see it. See the bedrock? Yep. And we've got a ladder right here. And we've got a hole through the roof of the nether. Um, that's why I wanted the ender pearls, so I could get through the roof pretty easily. And then once on the roof, I'm not sure if you've seen it. Maybe you have. Um, but the zip crowd server, or somebody, I'm not sure who came up with it first, but um, somebody found a little trick you can do with flame arrows and TNT. Uh, and you can break bedrock with it. So... Um, I broke a 3x3 three three hole. Actually, I went outside a little bit there. Oops. Um, but I've got a little 3x3 three three hole, so we can get all sorts of stuff through here. We can push horses up, or uh, villagers, or I don't know. Whatever we want to do on the roof. There we go, and that's at 0-0. Zero, zero. And that's uh, just to get it before we switch to another version. But... Um, that is it. So I've shown you the blaze farm, I showed you the mob farm, and I've shown you the hole in the roof of the nether. I did all that off camera, and uh, we may, there's going to be off camera projects. So, um, so just keep that in mind, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes I just need to progress the world a little bit and can't wait for recording, because there's only there's only so much time I have for recording, but I have more time generally for playing. So I do like getting progress done on this world. But uh, let's see, next episode. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. I've got a little list of things I need to accomplish, but uh, we might go in search of a stronghold. Who knows? But uh, until then, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you enjoy poking around this, uh, this world if you do happen to partake of that option. Um, and if you got any comments, questions, or suggestions, I'd love to hear it. If you got any ideas for the name for the tower, that would be great as well. And when it comes time for moving in, after we get the storage system in place, we will uh, have a little christening ceremony. And if your name gets picked, great. Uh, about the best that I can offer for that is the recognition of having come up with the name. Um, no prizes of, of monetary sort or anything like that. But, uh, hey, I would love to get some name suggestions. And, uh, and, yeah, that's it. So, hey, if you enjoyed, 
If you think about putting a like on it, if you really enjoyed, think about subscribing. And But as always, I do thank you for taking the time, spending it with me, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.